All righty. Good morning, everybody. According to the clock, it is actually time to uh, turn around and, and do the thing. Welcome to the second extra extra session. The extra, yes. I wasn't going to go there, but someone someone did. Um, for those, and I'll say it as I say it. Note the note well, well. Yeah, well. There it is again. The note well. Still the same as yesterday. Um, our agenda for today is IMAP 4 Rev 2. Thank you, Alexi. The blue sheets are going around. Um, Alexi's going to talk about IMAP 4 Rev 2. We're going to talk possibly some more about our charter. And that's everything on the agenda for today. So let's move straight over to Alexi's slides. Note that there are two two ads on the author yeah, list. Yeah, it does look very suspicious, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if if you if you want to be an ad, just ask us to be a co-author on this topic. Hey, is that a chair um dispatch? Seems to be that's the other way to do it. That's the other way. That's after oh, you're an right, ad right. and we put you out to pasture, you go to Career chair planning. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this. I'm not going to reiterate through goals. I think we're nearly done with the process. That's, you know, although it's an interesting thing because um, I obviously had, you know, some ideas by the way I try and talk to my clients or for the server. And then uh, Timo just sent a bunch of comments and you can see that goals might be a bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm just talking. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Talk, blah. talk, talk. This one's good. You can have this microphone. Yeah. Blah, blah. <laughs> Is that microphone actually live? Right, so. Okay, let me just. Oh, watch. Do you hear me? It, it yeah. works in a bit, a little bit. Okay. So. Very quickly, high level goals. Make client side develop you know, client developers life easier. Hey, hello. Fold uh, very common extensions to MF four F one into the base pack. Hopefully be able to run two on the same port. Right. So um Last time I had two slides, uh, sort of, you know, things to add and s things to remove and clarify. Um, the good thing that one of them is empty now. So um, I think most of clarifications are done. So we agreed last time to add the move command to the base pack. It's quite commonly used. Um, clarified and solicited um, fetches that they might contain UIDs. It simplifies clients significantly. Um, LSAP was taken out, search response, recent flag, unseen, response code, and select. So all the stuff that people, either there are better ways of doing this now, or they're just pointless things that servers need to do, and clients don't really care about these days. Um, I also found, <coughs> Looking at uh, RFC 2231 about parameter continuations, I found some text updating IMAP spec, and this was actually never mentioned in IMAP. Uh, so this was a, like RFC, uh, updating RFC 2060, which is IMAP 4. Um, I know that many servers do this already, so I just uh, made it clear. Things remaining. Um, I think more examples explaining use of body structure with various complicated messages, especially with nested messages and forward that would be very useful. There's still a significant amount of bugs and various implementations in regards to this. Again, if you have great examples, 
send them to the mailing list, that would be very helpful. But if not, I think we'll come up with, Barry and I will come up with something. Yeah, do we think, uh, am I coming through the speakers? I, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Do we think we can actually explain this in text better or that we just want to do it with better examples or more examples? Um, because, yeah, I know the, the nested messages in particular, especially complex ones, have just been a, a nightmare. Yeah, nested messages, they have special numbering. So they're always a special case. I can tell you, uh, so I'm recently writing, I'm a client again, and uh, I had to rewrite code three times to actually mm -hmm. go to all the cases. And this is me, so you know right. this is pretty so the, complicated. The question is, can we can we make the text um, better, or just do it with examples? I would start with examples because the, the document has one example, but it doesn't demonstrate lots of diverse complexity. Every time I need to test it, I test it against my own server, which you know, similar to Cyrus. And, All right. Um, yeah. So I, I would say add a couple more examples, and then we can see if we can. Improved text. Um, the only other major additions are addi <coughs> addition of list extended, as we already agreed, allowing status in list, and um, one clarification that needs to be done is um, binary fetch. So. Uh, we discussed it last time and a little bit on the mailing list. I think we agreed to add the fetch side of it so that you can fetch binary, uh, body parts in binary, but we decided not to add append side so when you can upload them, um, this keeps it <coughs> a little bit simpler. Um, and Chris raised a question which I had on to-do list, but it's not reflected in the message. In the, in the latest revision is, we need to be clear whether binary fetch only applies to leave body parts or whether it applies to intermediate nodes. So what does it mean if you fetch binary a uh, multi-part mixed? Do we want it to work, you know, so. I think the, the intent of binary is to retrieve a binary body part not to retrieve in binary mode a segment of the message. So I think we should just stick with that and say that binary is a single body part. Mm. Uh, and, and yeah, leap, a, a single leap body part. Does anyone have a real use case where they need to use binary to retrieve a portion of the tree that isn't just a leaf body part? Well, it I suppose what I'm thinking about is if you have a forwarded or nested message, you want to start with this message RFC body part and download everything below it, basically. And if it's in binary, you want to get it in binary. This is the, the case where it confuses clients to have to check, is this a message RFC 822, then I need to download it as not binary, otherwise I need to download it as binary to get the binary representation because the binary representation of a message RFC 822 is just the bytes. I suppose my sense would be that, okay, are people really doing that? as opposed to, my sense is that if you're gonna do that kind of thing, you just download the whole message in the first place. You just do a fetch RFC 822. And yeah, get except for message. whether it's message digest of, you know, hundreds of other messages. And yeah. I know, okay. I know it's a bit contrived example. It's okay. rather complicated yeah, use case, then, but. Maybe we can say it applies only to leaf nodes and to message RFC 822 okay. parts or something. Ned would like to say to the microphone, message slash global question mark. Yeah, yeah, that's the big, so big mess part. Message big... body parts. And well, actually, body actually, parts. there is extra issue with message global because message global now allows nested encodings. Mm -hmm. And I actually haven't looked at the text to see what makes sense. 
Timo would also like to say to the microphone, main problem with multiple parts or multiple messages is handling unknown CTE response code since you right. don't know what exactly it applies to. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the problems with fetching multiple chunks. Hmm. All right. Well, fine. If there are use cases for other than leaf nodes, then we should uh, allow that. Sorry, I, w I was really playing devil's advocate. <laughs> I just came up with this. Um, yeah, maybe we should think a little bit more. Um, I, yeah, I'd like to say, you know, the this implementing... Chris Newman. Chris Newman, sorry. Yeah, implementing this for a leaf note, it, a, 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 a leaf part is, is pretty straightforward on the server. Right. Implementing this to support, you know, a subset of the message gets... Uh, more complicated, and if you actually wanted to implement, uh, you know, decoding the nested encoding case message global, which I never would, um, <laughs> then it gets even more complicated. Um, and um, so, you know, I I would say we, you know, I would say the trade-off is we, we kind of want IMAP4 Rep2 to actually deploy, so we want to minimize barriers to getting it deployed within reason. So that's why I would pretty strongly prefer leaf node only. Okay. No, I, I think actually uh, the complexity argument, right. I think you won over me because, yeah, you need to potentially, you know, do, I don't know, decode them into separate files and that's merge this absolutely. together. And this is, them yeah. Together and stream, stream yeah. them out. Maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I was saying only leaf parts. I, and the same thing that Chris said. Why don't we put only the leaf body parts in the spec? And as we review it, people can say right. whether this, whether they suddenly discover. Well, yeah. Uh, I, I think possible outcome of this discussion is we need to review how message global works with binary anyway. So maybe we'll do, we'll do revision of the binary extension, which includes other bits, you know. Mm -hmm later on. Sure. Ned would like to say leaf only is fine for him as a starting point. Okay. Yeah. So the, we, well, as long as we tell it, you know, it. So let's, let's yeah. put leaf only in the spec with a note that says, please review this part carefully mm. and make sure that you don't have real use cases for other, for other answers. Yeah, there are a couple of remaining bits from, uh, I think, we, so Braun did a couple of polls last time about various bits. I'm not sure there is any strong feeling for any of this, so I suspect probably this will be dropped. But if you have an opinion. Uh, Chris Newman, I just, I really like search res. It's, it's very simple to implement, um, you know, nice little spec. So you I, don't don't get a problem from me. I'm the author. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, fine. I I think you know one less one less option since it's you know wide it's easy to implement and widely implemented. Okay. If we can minute this. Yeah. Uh, nobody's gonna make a case for status deleted, right? Well, uh, yeah. In quota base already. Yeah, this, this is, it, it came sort of related to quota, you know, how much storage you can free if yeah. you expunge the mailbox type thing. But so we can just delete. Mail, number of messages isn't relevant to that. It's the total size of the messages that really It matters. depends on your quota resource type. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, happy to drop the second one. Okay. Um, right. So, just going back, there are a couple of changes related to list extended that we need to do. We clarify binary fetch. We add search res. Uh, we should be able to do this by material, I would say. <clears throat> and then I thought, you know, there is nothing else. And then Timo sent a long message yesterday thinking up on all the things that I forgot about, which is actually was very good. 
So let's just go through. I didn't have slides for this, so let's just. Yeah, it just keeps scrolling. Yeah, the, the, uh, this is straightforward. Um, I, I had a bit of a complaint about this, that you actually have to keep track of every single UID bulletin that you've ever told a client ever, because that client might reconnect. Right, so just keeping existing language. Yeah, it, it's a um, well-known deficiency in Cyrus-based implementations, at least. Um, not, yeah. Our server doesn't increment your validity when we so rename. Wait, we scrolled past it too quickly. What what it is? What is so it the issue is um, uh, must be greater, must be different. Okay. If you okay. call, yeah, if you, yeah. okay. if you call the client, uh, you don't. I don't think clients enforce check that the new value is greater than ju just check it's not the same as the last one they know about. Yeah, I, know, I understand. I just needed to read it. That was it. Yeah. Um, so I think Braun argued that we should keep it as is, basically. Yeah, I think so. Even if servers are not actually obeying it. Right. Um, yeah, I agree about this. Must not you know, literally close the connection without by is... Uh, yeah. It's not very well described now. Yeah, it should be a should now. Yeah, and we probably should talk about more, you know, what are the cases exactly. Yeah, or well, should send a buy if closing the connection, really. Uh, because there are times when you just, you, you can't, you just have to kill the connection. No, it's must not without sending buy, so. Well, I know, but I'm saying sometimes yeah. you sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes right, you exactly. just have to kill the connection. Yeah. So that's why should not is the right thing. Yeah. Chris Newman, I, I agree with should not. The two, the two cases I've encountered where it's very important to just hang up is like is you know in the middle of if if the client starts uh, delaying in the middle of a TLS negotiation, you know, you can't send it by, you know, you cannot. The only option is close detection, and then you know also you know the other example was fetch fetching large message. Which, Actually, you know, can you send a small message about in the middle of TLS? I think that that's quite might be a very useful to to add to the document. Yeah, I mean the fact is, if if you're killing it in the middle of a large fetch, technically you can send the buy, but it doesn't do any good. The client's not going to get it before you kill the connections. Right. Uh, the only other thing I would argue for here is let's get rid of a few of the negatives from that and just say should send a buy if unilaterally closing the connection yeah. rather than should not if not, not, not. Yes. Hey. Yes. Okay. All right. So we keep scrolling down. Yeah. And uh, clarifying uh, quoted nil versus nil as an atom and special form. That's fine. Um. That I um, well, basically, it was just a statement of fact that some servers treat mailbox names as case sensitive because they might be using file system on the OS, which is itself case insensitive in ASCII range. So this is client clients cannot rely on this one way or the other, and you know it's. Uh, Server implementations have a choice which way they want to do it. It's more a statement of fact than, you know. Right. The, hmm. So the typical way of doing that is the server preserves the case but doesn't care. Yes. Um, but this effects create in the sense of if you try to create mailbox in different case, it will fail the latter one. That's correct. And that's, and not, that's the only thing it is trying not to a say. Bad behavior. Right. But um, yeah, I would rather go that way than. Yeah. What I mean, I, what I, I'm I to do is recommend that either you that that you always preserve the case of the created mailbox, mm -hmm. and that the server may choose to ignore the case in f future references to that mailbox. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Well, can you suggest some text? Because I'll, this was I'll, I'll suggest specific. This was text not thing. intended to be any level of requirements. It's just showing two alternatives that are common in the wild, basically. Right. But but I think we do need to be prescriptive about it so that um, we make it clear that if you do the wrong thing, you're going to screw up interoperability in funny ways. I'll, I'll come up with text sure. for it. When I do when I do the list extended additions, I'll look at this. Okay, thank Got you. Two things from Jabba here. Um, one from Ned saying problem with calling for specific TLS behavior is that it's typically up to the TLS implementation you're using. I'm not. Sure I, I don't think anybody. Uh, Chris didn't say anything about specific TLS. All, all yeah. he was saying was highlight that as a reason that you might have to close the connection without. There a is bond. no other choice to do that. Yeah, do it. Um, um, Timo it. says. I'm maybe more worried about the part of the UTF-8 normalization than case sensitivity. Yeah. It was case sensitive in ASCII range. That was deliberate. Yeah. But I, I, I will look at this whole thing about mailbox naming and make a pass through it, and then we'll see where we come Okay. Out. Scroll down. Yep. Yes, this section needs to work. Uh, what happened is Chris contributed text to move modified UTF-7 to appendix, sort of as an optional backward compatibility thing, and this wasn't cleanly edited. So it might give you a wrong impression that this is supported. So I, I think we just need to review and uh, either move the section or edit it slightly. Yeah, I think this is going to be a landmine <coughs> for servers that are trying to support both Rev1 and Rev2, dealing with both UTF modified UTF-7 and UTF-8 for the same mailbox names. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, uh, Chris is going to tell us how to do this. Yeah, I've implemented this. It, there are some subtle cases, but it's, uh, but it's I was able to, but it's not too bad. Um, yeah, the subtle case is you must track on the server side whether or not the client has enabled either IMAP4 Rev2 or, um, you know, or the UTF-8 extent, SMTP UTF-8. Because if right. the client's enabled it, then the the behavior of a, of a bare ampersand is different. Because if the client hasn't enabled, a bare ampersand is an error because it's it has to assume uh, MUTF7. And if it's enabled, then a bare ampersand, you know, is allowed. And if your internal storage is MUTF7, you turn the bare ampersand into ampersand dash. So yeah, this is this is implementable. Okay. Is there any advice that you think we can add to this? I haven't thought the full the, the whole thing through to be honest i was thinking about you know so you're saying you're rejecting modif uh bare ampersand if in well, well non okay so here, mode, here's right? the issue once right. you allow utf-8 in the protocol you may as well allow utf-8 in the protocol period whether or not you've enabled it yeah um so you know it's actually harder if you disallow utf-8 unless you've enabled it so i allow utf-8 all the time yeah um but then you have then the way you deal with UTF-8 is different, depending a little bit different for mailbox names, depending on whether or not you've enabled because of the encoding case. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can come. I understand what Chris is getting at. So again, I'll see if I can write text and we'll see how okay. that comes out. All oh, right. Authenticate. I completely agree with this. We should not. We, we should take out digest MD5 and sure, SCRAM SHA-256 is a fine substitution. I think I did move digest MD5 to historic anyway, so that's probably yeah. a bad thing. So he's, yeah. he's right about that. Um, I'm just wondering if we should have a mandatory to implement one, like call SCRAM mandatory to implement or something like that. Because otherwise, a client could implement a perfectly good SASL mechanism, and the server could implement a perfectly mm. good other SASL mechanism, and then they're stuck with plain text passwords because they don't have anything good in common. 
uh, Chris Newman, the, the fact of the matter is they're stuck with plain text passwords anyway. Um, uh, so the, as much as I'd like to promote Scramshot 256, I think promoting it with as a mandatory to implement isn't the right way to do it. it it's, you know, I, th I think it needs to be encouraged by the community, but um, I don't think, you know, I think people will just ignore that and we're, and we're, we're trying to impose our, our wishes on, you know, on implementers that can't follow that. Basically the issue is if you tie into an identity system and any medium to large deployment has to tie into an identity system, you know, you, you can only implement what the identity system supports. So, right. oh. you know, if we put in a mandatory to implement, we're saying we're saying something that we know people will have own. control and, and can't deploy. But I mean, I think this text is along the line of should. It doesn't quite it is. say. I, I was suggesting a mandatory to implement, but uh, so Chris, the, you say we're stuck with plain text passwords anyway. Do you mean we're stuck with implementing them or we're stuck with using them? Well, uh, for the most part, both. I mean, you can you can create enclaves where you can do other things, but right. they're enclaves. I'll just one more note. Um, I I came up with an idea for a new SASL mechanism that I'm going to work on that. Uh, for bootstrapping device-specific tokens, um, so I'm going to try working. I'm going to be working on that and come up with a proposal. So, okay. um, just just for the record, I suspect that we might get some pushback from the sec ads about the about not having a mandatory to implement SAS mechanism. Okay, we'll, we'll burn that. We'll burn that bridge if we get to it. Well, should this bridge is strong anyway. So. Uh, but that's still not mandatory to implement, and they often want mandatory to implement. We'll, we'll see where we go. That's, we'll, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, our favorite topic I forgot about, reference argument yeah. and list. The reference, for, for those who don't know the history, the reference argument is there as, as like a CD, change directory command within the... The system and it was put there because of a particular back end that used Unix file system. Is that obsolete now? Should we not use that anymore? Well, we don't want to change syntax, right? You know, uh, at the moment it has two parameters basically, and there are complicated rules for combining them. So, uh, well, it's so uh, we're Timo's keeping the parameter syntax wise, you just stick in a null string. I mean, we can certainly deal with it syntax-wise. I guess my thought is that if, well, there's two things. If you need it syntax-wise and you're arbitrarily sticking in a null string, why not stick in an actual string? But there is some complexity to implementing a non-null string there, as I found out when I first implemented it. Yes. So, I, I think we should just leave it the way it is. Yeah, I'm tempted to leave it the way it is. I'm happy to say clients should use just empty reference. And then again, right. you, know, you need I'm, to explain. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that. Why does it matter? If everybody has to implement it and make it work anyway, then it doesn't really matter. Well, it just helps. Unless you're writing special client, it's just easier. Yeah, to write I'll, the I'll client. buy that. The, the, Complexity on the server remains, I, yes. I, I would not want to put it as a normative statement, but I would I would put it as an explanation that this is why it's there. If you don't have that particular use case, you're better off just using a null string and not going. Timo, do you have anything further to say about this? Timo says, I think some clients have used the reference string and then it works differently in different servers, which confuses. I believe that's true, yeah. So, but but I, I think, as Alexei said, I think in, in some sense we really can't do anything about that at this point, unless we want to be incompatible. So right. just tell clients not to do it and then... Right, tell clients it's a bad idea to do it unless you have a really good reason to, right. but not at a should level, just... That's fine. Yeah. All right, else, else up. 
But Elsa, so, Elsa is gone, right? Yeah, well, there is, uh, no, the, the comment was about no selects. Uh, when you do ah, select empty yeah. string, right? Yeah. No, list empty string, and then you get right. uh, Haroki separator. If we were writing it from scratch, I would have fixed it, but I'm tempted just to leave it as is, because clients still need to handle it the way it is, so. Yes. It's a kludge, but, you know, just yes. let it be. Well, that's, again, an artifact of a particular back end that was unable to put mailboxes and messages in the same mailbox. Is really where it came from. Mm. Right? If you if you create if your mail if your back end structure says that if X contains other subfolders, mm -hmm. it can't also contain messages. Oh no, no no, you're no talking select. about no select. That's where no select no no no. Uh, I think this is talking about list, quote, 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 quote. Yeah. You get this hierarchy separator yeah. to find out, you know, how to parse list of mailboxes. Or do it for the namespace, I think. So. Oh, I'm just, I'm not talking about this text. I'm talking about Timo's comment. Timo's comment. About the no-select kludge. That's... I might have misinterpreted his comment then, you know, right, fair enough. Um, yeah, uh, regarding no select in general, as much as it's, you know, it's pretty similar to non-existent in some, well, and in other cases it's not, but yeah, I don't think we can do anything about this, yeah, to be honest. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Timo says the comment was about L sub empty string percent. That's what I thought yeah. he was talking about. Yeah, but, but well, so how does that? It returns a special list response. Yes. That just returns you hierarchy delimiter, but it doesn't correspond to oh, existing oh, okay, mailbox yeah, yeah. name. Okay, okay, okay. Timo is then saying, but you were saying list extended is coming anyway, so then L sub would be removed. It's already gone. Yeah, yeah. L sub is not going to, that's why I said it's, so, um, don't so I don't think that's that. really an issue. I, w I was thinking of no. I was looking at the no select in general. So anyway, let's move on. Oh, actually, sorry. I might have intended for it to be gone. It might still remain in the document. No. Then it needs to be taken out. Well, yes. all right. Let when me I, when I put in to be removed. Yeah, anyway. when I put in list extended, I'm, I'm going to go through and make yes. sure that, that, that that's part of it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is very interesting requirement. Um, In general, using different hierarchy delimiters in different namespaces is, yeah. I wouldn't say it's a, well, it's almost like a bad idea, but I understand why people do this. Yeah, this doesn't even have to do with different hierarchy delimiters. It's, uh, yeah. it's just saying create, creating a new mailbox in a personal namespace when there are multiple personal namespaces. Um, yeah, I agree using the, the first one. Well, an advanced client can do this, but so no, I, I haven't seen go any a different route and say that we, I don't think we should be using normative language to talk about what a user interface should do. So maybe what we should say is just what, what the, what the alternatives might be and let the client decide whether to put up a pop-up asking for which namespace or just use the first one. And here we're, we're saying yes, that uh, it, it, we're, we don't need this to use should should is about a user interface yeah, issue. Yeah, I agree. Um, and check definitely we should drop, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I haven't actually seen, I might know of one server that does multiple namespaces but of the same type. So it's not a very common option, but yeah, it's quite a lot of complexity. We just we, sh we just shouldn't have a shit there. Right. We'll um, check command. Um, Does uh, anyone use that? Well, I think it has slightly different semantic. In practice, all the servers I know through check and knob no as yes, the same. Exactly. Um, I'm fine either saying they are the same or removing check. I don't mind. I, I 
suggest that we remove check because I've never encountered a client that sent it anyway. I think the check is more expensive one, right? Supposedly, so but we already, yeah. If, if it isn't just a no op, then it's more expensive, but yeah. Okay, yeah, I think it, it, it's also more complicated to write a client to figure out which one you need to, to use where, when, and so, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna drop it? Yeah. A any objections to dropping check, speaker? You'll have another chance when you review the document, but, mm. okay. Hmm. Well, I think we need specific text proposal here. So, I, I, okay, here's the thing about search. I know at least four different ways that search has been implemented in different servers. Mm -hmm. And I know of no interoperability issues that that causes. That search is consistent in how it's implemented for the things that matter, like flag searches and such. Or and header for, field searches. Or header field searches. But for strings in the body of the message, there's no inter interoperability issue. It's a user experience issue. And I, like I said, it's I know four different almost. versions. Yeah. And users of those systems just get used to what they get. And I don't think we need to worry about it. So what's the proposal here that we remove the exact specification of how body search works and, and have it behave like search fuzzy? Yes. Well, it not even, it's not a have it behave like search fuzzy. Some servers will make it behave like a search fuzzy. Some will do substring matches. Some will do other things. I would like to keep, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, do substring or something. I don't know. Not exactly this uh, written this way, but I agree if you haven't I, thought about right. optimizing it, start with this. A graduate student who's writing an IMAP server will need better wording than what we what I'm suggesting. Yeah. But any anybody who's really knows what they're doing with a mail store will do whatever they do with mail stores. So maybe just a few words in here that say <laughs> substring matching is a good default if you don't have anything else. If you don't if you don't have a reason right. to do anything else. Maybe I'll, I'll take an action to look at the text here and figure something out when I do my updates okay. and we'll see where we get. Yeah, I do, the one thing I'd like to see is uh, less prescriptive about exactly what you have to do. Correct. And because that's not being followed in practice. Right, no, nobody, w nobody worried about that. So let's take that. Cool. Okay, fetch macros. Um, the macros are handy and clients use them. Yeah, I'm tempted to leave them as is. Uh, uh, Fast so, is kind of the funny one, but um, yes. I don't know that I've ever seen that. But I've seen all in full. All right, so keep. Might as well keep them all. I mean, it does not add complexity. No. So it's a simple bit mask, and right. you know, a couple of you know, right. it's relatively simple. Yeah. So while I, in principle, I agree with Timo that it's probably time to do that it doesn't matter enough t to break interoperability for it. Yeah. Or break backward compatibility for it. Yeah. Um, and then things like the binary and body requiring dot peak only. That's an interesting one. Turn off the auto setting of the scene. Um, the Body, I, I don't have enough experience with binary to say, but the body is certainly, it's kind of odd that it sets the scene bit for some partial body retrievals. And the main thing is if you, if you have a two gigabyte body part and you retrieve the first three bytes of it, does it make sense to set the scene bit? And if the answer is no, yeah, but this is a user point, interface. Does it make sense? It's a user interface issue. Not entirely, because um, the scene bit affects other clients that are accessing the same mail store. So, or, you know, the same sub well, part of the mail store. Uh, Personally, I ha hate auto setting scene, but I'm just trying to find out if there are clients that relies on it. So I don't want just to take oh, this away. Clients rely on it. Well, 
then I suspect maybe we should again encourage use dot peak, but don't take it out. I'll buy that. So it's a bit of discussion that says setting the auto scene flag, automatically setting the scene flag on partial searches has come out, has show, been shown to be problematic. Clients should consider whether they should uh, turn off the automatic setting using dot peak. Whatever, something like that. Yes, if you can just survive problematic other than this is annoying, you know, <laughs> which is not quite the same thing. Well, problematic is unexpected behavior. That's true. Yeah. If, if you're using, for instance, if you're using a partial, a partial fetch in order to populate a one-line summary of the message in the message list, and that causes the message to be seen, that's unexpected behavior. Yeah. I, if you are writing the client like this, I, I assume users will start screaming at you. Very right. Soon, so right? Th that's a, some kind of text like that that says dot peak is a good idea for these situations. Sounds good. Oh. Next one. Yes. Uh, this is a mission. Will be fixed. Yep. yep. Yeah. I, I again, have a I've, lot of, unfortunately, I've seen a, a lot of use of the RFC 822 versions of these. I would just But this it. might be the time to start deprecating because RFC 822 is, has been obsolete for 15 years now. There is actually comment in the, at the beginning, even in 3501 saying, Despite saying RFC A to two, it doesn't actually mean that. I understand, but I, I just would rather not have that be a protocol element anymore. Well, it's a, it's a MIME element still, so yeah. it's stuck. Yeah. Well, I'm how, sort of- How about properly deprecating, which means leave them in, but say that they may be, that these removed in the next revision or something. may be removed in the next version, so you should start using the other I'm okay with it. It's sort of like uh, like must minus in security area, you know. Yeah. Must implement now might be removed. Yeah. But anyway, we I think we I can put text in for that. But I, yeah, I agree. It's time to to deprecate them. Yes. Mentioning capability uh, that it might be on login and authenticate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Right, namespace response extensions. Um, I was thinking about this yesterday and I thought I agree with you with Timo and then I think I remembered one case where it's actually used, which is a language extension. Localized namespaces per language. Um, well, his point is um, if, if that you should tell people where to find what that means. So. It is defined in ABNF. It just, there is no example of what it is. Well, it's an extension, but I think probably need to add some text what the intent of it is. Yeah. Okay. Chris, is namespace one of yours? Okay. Well, I guess- Do you have an opinion about are namespace? Are there any namespace response extensions currently? I think language does have one, but I need okay. to. Then, then we can put in an example, and then that should do it. Okay. All right, and then the last little items there about separator stuff. The second one is interesting. I don't think the second one is correct. Inbox cannot have a, a separate separator. The only way it can have if it's its own personal namespace. Right, but um, so, but you can have an inbox in each namespace. Only one of them is magic inbox. Only one of them is magic, correct. So, so maybe it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'll buy that. Um, should flex permanent flags be sent after new keyword? I think the answer is no. Yeah. I mean, the reason, well, so we have 
slash star special marker saying I support ADA, right? New keyboards and can store them. Right. If the server returns this marker, you store a new keyboard, there is no need to announce it because, mm -hmm. and the command succeeded, it stored it. There are some implementations that have a limit on number of keywords. For them, at some right. point, they need to announce that Someone just slash star it. is no longer there at this point, you know. So I think the answer so is no. Timo, do you have any comment about the use case for what you're talking about here, about the flags, permanent flags? He wrote a text according to the spec, and some servers break it. OK. Comment here. Timo says, I don't really care. It's just different servers work differently. OK. Excellent. All right. The last one I'm not entirely sure. Is this just clarification? Search text. On. He's just pointing out some discussions that happened on the list some time ago. So. Um, yeah, I don't. I'll check his wiki. We, we we should look at the explanations for search text and search body and make sure that they're clear about what the differences are. Right. The other thing is I did. <coughs> Do they work differently as uh, as far as uh, drilling into body parts and decoding the body parts to do the search and all of that? No, I, mean, I think one, one is of, more inclusive. You than think the other. one is more inclusive than I think the body other. is more inclusive for that, but text is more inclusive for header fields and stuff. So you know there are differences, and we need to make sure that the text clarifies it. That's all. Okay, so thank you, Timo, for this. This is actually working group last call level comments. I'm very glad you sent them early, so that makes it so much easier to deal with. So thank you for that. All right. Um, don't need to get any more of that. Changes, changes, changes. Cool. Yeah. This is just. Oh, this is just past changes. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, thanks, Alexi. We are pretty much exactly on time. Um, are we at working group last call stage? Absolutely yeah. not. No. We, but we should be, we'll certainly be by Montreal, and I hope sooner. One, maybe two revisions, Alexei says, and I agree with that. Cool. I have to make a pass, and then Alexei will have to make a pass again. And if he doesn't come up with anything significant after that, then we should be ready for last call. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, that is all we had on the agenda for today, other than checking our milestones. Like. Everybody's trying to do stuff with this all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Data tracker gets busy three times yes. a year. I'm not convinced this has a super reliable network connection. A laptop. All right. There we go. Master the back. Yeah. Oh, actually. I was trying to remember, this is one of my, this is your working book now. Right, so I put the fetch preview on the first telechat in April. So um, I nearly put it before, but uh, transition, but it, we had quite a few very busy telechats, so. Um. Yeah, but that doesn't, uh... oh, okay. Um, so the only thing we, we, um, we ought to be able to adopt these documents, the two milestones that say adopt, we ought to be able to get that done, right? So uh, yeah, adopting the, adopting those two documents should be fine. Um, right. 
uh, that's then, just a matter of sending out the right. call for adoption. Then we, meet the, we, we, we mark those milestones done when that happens, and we create new milestones for dates for those. Yep. Um, so the, the IMAP for Rev2 changed the milestone to, say, May, and we should be okay with that. Or maybe right. June. Say June. We, yep. we, can always, we can always beat it. Cool. Um, and updating the charter we still look at doing next month. We have, we have two charter actions from yesterday, one of which was to update the charter for this, and the other one was to propose a new charter for updating uh, 3.21.22. Yeah, so your, that, that's the question of the dates for that is to you. Can, can you meet those dates? Can I meet updating this char the updating charter? Updating the charter group? by yes. next month. Um, I, I, the charter for the other group is your problem. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Uh, we don't have anything else on our list, I don't believe, for the milestones, certainly not from today's session. Um, planning for Montreal, we'll definitely, I expect one to meet there again. We'll have a new charter and, and new work to look at. We've, we don't need to go over the charter again today unless anyone has anything they want to propose for that. Um, dinner is tonight. I didn't call for show of hands. Anyone who didn't already say they were coming at the JMAP session yesterday or email me, got a couple more. Perfect. Three more. I will I will uh, change from 12 to 14. Excellent. That is all I've got. Anyone have anything else they want to discuss for this IATF regarding extras? Time does Utah come in? Eight minutes. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Oh, yes. Yes. Good point. Uh, we'll meet here at 6.50. It is only about five minutes walk to the place. So here is downstairs in the lobby between the lifts. I will send an email to the list. Look, look for a crowd of socially awkward people standing together. No, that's that doesn't work. Uh, There's too, heaps too, of them. Too broad. Yeah, yes. yeah. N narrow it down. No, it still doesn't help. All right, thank you. Um, if you haven't signed the blue sheets yet, I think they're floating around the room somewhere. Please grab them, sign them. Hello. Yeah. Give us a minute. Five. I've pulled up your pulled up your page here. It sort of it means you sort of have to end like five minutes it, early, right? It does help. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. The planning is. Yeah.